Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GinJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Thursday, March 7th. We just dropped our Jaguars free agency plan, Daniel Thomas re-signing video. Here is show number three of the day for you. The Jaguars have been busy so far this morning. Ezra Cleveland, according to Ian Rappaport, has re-signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're going to dive into it here. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out GinJag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. So, The Jaguars traded for Ezra Cleveland last year at the trade deadline, giving up a six-round pick to take over at starting left guard. The Jags had had some injuries there. They wanted Walker Little to be the starting left guard. He's definitely a better tackle than guard Walker Little is, right? Uh, So they traded the six-round pick to the Vikings to get Ezra Cleveland in here. Cleveland, he started his whole career there in Minnesota, played really well the last few years overall in Minnesota. He had been a, a really good run blocking interior offensive lineman and and, and guard um, much better than what the Jaguars had certainly and he had been you know okay in pass pro not like overly efficient but not detrimental to his offense right when he got to Jacksonville he suffered some minor injuries had a knee that he was dealing with Uh, his play on the field was impacted no doubt about it and it's also extremely difficult to switch teams come into an offensive line that's already struggling and thrive mid-season right I think that that was a difficult task for Ezra Cleveland, regardless of injury, but he was also playing through injury for them. So, you know, it didn't go well for him, didn't go well for the Jaguars offense, didn't go well for the offensive line, didn't go well for the team down the stretch, right? So the Jaguars, though, as expected, as I told you all off all off season, as I said, the Jaguars would probably do in that free agency plan video earlier today. They are bringing back Ezra Cleveland. It never made sense to trade for Cleveland during the six, for a six-round pick during the middle of a season to only pick him up for the end of the season, right? I think they always wanted to retain him beyond this year, and they knew that he was on a expiring deal. I think that they wanted to keep him. I think that Phil Rauscher coached him in Minnesota. Um, Doug Peterson and, and Trent Baalke were in on it, so I think that it just made a lot of sense. And now you look at this new deal, though, three years – $28.5 million, $14.5 million guaranteed to Ezra Cleveland. Uh, the Jaguars, they had the opportunity to sign him before market uh, without tampering because he was obviously on their roster last year. They did exactly that. Uh, I'm sure there would have been some teams interested in signing Ezra Cleveland. I'm not sure how much he would have made on the open market. Uh, I, I do believe that PFF had him right around $9 million per year which is in line with what the Jaguars just gave him. And Brad Spielberger over at PFF does a tremendous job predicting contracts. He did so here. The Jaguars were pretty much right where uh, he predicted Ezra Cleveland would land. But looking at this deal, we don't have the exact details yet in terms of the team out, the signing bonus, the the 2024 cap hit. But based on uh, what the Jaguars typically do, with their contracts, we can make some guesses here, some educated guesses. Likely a team out after the second year, after the 2025 season, which means the Jaguars would be able to move on from him and save some cap space. Uh, the way the Jaguars structure their contracts, his 2024 cap hit will probably be about 3 to $4 million. The way they do these new deals, generally speaking, they, they write a large signing bonus and that makes it so they can prorate that signing bonus over the course of the contract and then reduce the year one cap hit to about 35 to 40 percent of the average annual value. And the average annual value of this one is nine and a half million dollars. So, again, that's where I'm getting the three to four million dollar uh, range in terms of what his 2024 cap hit will be. That's a very palatable 2024 cap hit, right? The Jaguars had cap space. They will get more cap space down the road when they figure out the Josh Allen deal. Uh, but yeah, they have enough money to get some things done in free agency, and they do need to get some things done. Uh, the big money year here for Ezra Cleveland will be 2025 from a salary cap perspective. Uh, that's probably where he will be well over that $10 million mark in terms of a cap hit. The Jaguars have a very healthy um cap situation for 2025. So again, that is palatable. Then you can save again after 2025 if you want to by releasing him, eating some dead money, but having a pretty decent cap savings, right? Uh, To me, this contract, it's not super, super inspiring. It's fine, right? 
He's better than he showed when he played through injury here for the Jaguars last year, but still probably like a slightly above average starter in the NFL at guard. Um, He's been super efficient uh, as a run blocker, like very, very good run blocker throughout his career. But in pass pro, you know, under 97% efficiency in pass pro, to me that's not, again, not super inspiring. It's okay. Uh, I, I don't think he's been detrimental to his team but when you're getting paid the way he's getting paid is is the juice worth the squeeze necessarily I'm not sure now the Jaguars what they like to do what Trent Baalke likes to do he does not want to go into the draft feeling that he has a a specific need a, a hole in the starting lineup that has to be addressed early on he likes to address all the potential holes in the roster with veterans whether they're high quality or not, that's a different story. But he likes to address all the holes in the roster with veterans and then move into the draft feeling like he can go BPA, he can do what he wants to do in the draft without being pigeonholed into having to take this position or that position or this player or that player at a certain spot, right? Um, So again, Ezra Cleveland, slightly above average starter, very good run blocker, which I know some Jags fans will be excited about that, right? The Jaguars, they need to get their running game going more. But to me, I would pay more for better pass protectors because this is a pass-first offense. You have a franchise quarterback. As much as you want to get the run game going and need to get the run game going, I think the passing game is going to be the bread and butter of this offense as long as Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence are here. So the Jaguars, they do still have plenty of cap, plenty of flexibility uh, to sign Calvin Ridley. Whenever they get the Josh Allen deal done, that will clear up more cap space as well. He's currently on the uh, cap sheet for $24 million against the cap. Once they get his deal done, that will probably reduce by anywhere from like $10 to $13 million, free up that cap space. I'm not saying I'm confident that they will handle this properly, that Trent Baalke is going to get this done. But the framework, the flexibility is still there for things to move forward according to plan, which is keeping Josh Allen, keeping Calvin Ridley, and upgrading a couple other spots, right? Uh, For me, though, left guard is now accounted for. You have your starter. Even if you don't like it, he is the starter. He's getting paid starter money. He is the starter in 2024. Uh, I think that you still got to upgrade at center. I think you still need to add an interior defensive lineman after moving on from Foley Fatu Kasi. I think you need to add a, a designated pass rusher and edge to to get after the quarterback after Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen. You have to have a rotation. You really need three or four guys at least. Um, you need to add a corner or two. You released Darius Williams. Uh, you, you need to get some things done there, right? At corner, obviously Tyson Campbell's still in play. You need to figure out how to get Ridley back or have a backup plan at wide receiver if Ridley – You know, he's going to be the number one receiver on the market. So it's possible you get outbid. It's very possible. So uh, you need to have a backup plan for him as well. And then you need to sign Josh Allen at some point because I don't think Josh Allen reports to anything, including training camp, until a deal is done. How long will it take the Jaguars to get that deal done? We'll find out. Lots of work to do. Free agency, you know, basically starts on Monday when the legal tampering period kicks off. We'll see how it all plays out. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.